Now we're on to drill number three and the last drill for the intro to bookkeeping. So this is talking about source documents. Um, the reason why I always wanna bring this up is because it's super important that we're not guessing, right? Remember that um, principle, our gap principle that I told you I liked and I believe it was number six. Let me move my big old head out of the way. Sorry guys, it's being really touchy. There we go. So. The, that principle talks about fact-based uh, data, and that fact-based data is source documentation. Now, what is source documentation? We're talking bank statements that goes for checking and savings. We're talking about credit card statements, loans, loan documents, um, line of credit documents, receipts, obviously, invoices and bills. These are our source documents. Um, for instance, uh, one of my student's clients was giving her a very hard time about her bookkeeping cleanup. And uh, she was like, hey, he told me that, you know, he he made this uh, $200,000, I'm just throwing a number out there, $200,000 um, purchase. And it was for land for the company. So just, just write it in as land. That's what he told her. And um, as a bookkeeper and as one of my students, I was like, what's our golden rule? CYA cover your ass cya all the time because then again you don't get in trouble with the irs and look like you've been helping you know scheme and steal money and tax evasion and all these things that we don't want associated with our name with our brand and with who we are as professionals and if you're a business owner working through these courses and watching this you don't want that as well. And the IRS will come knocking. I promise you, they will come knocking. If not now, soon. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I believe that uh, someone told me that, I forgot the number, but we all know that the IRS has hired thousands of people to do more audits, to get better at cracking down on audits, especially after the whole PPP loans happened and the small business loans happened. They're really cracking down on small businesses. Why? Because small businesses can't afford the tax lawyer. A majority of them cannot. So without a tax lawyer, they're easy picking. So source documents, CYA, cover your ass. Always ask. I get asked a lot, hey, Cece, what do you do if they don't have a receipt? If they don't have a receipt, I will have my client um, email me an explanation of what that purchase was for if it's reasonable, if we cannot get it, or say it's um, they lost the receipt and it was just something like dinner. If, if I need to move past it and I want to you know, record and get on with everything, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, what I'll need from you is I need you to email me. I will um, email me back in response because normally I'm asking them questions. I have them email me because one, it's proof that it came from their email. We can track it. The IRS can track that. And two, sometimes I'll even, I mean, we can go as far as having them sign it, but they just have to tell me um, this charge for $1,200 was for a purchase. Um, and let's, I'm saying $1,200. Let's go with like $200. They went to business dinner. Hopefully their business dinner wasn't $1,200, but say they had a business dinner um, and they took out some clients or customers of theirs and they spent about $200. Maybe they did spell, spend $1,200, I don't know, but they lost the receipt and they can't get the receipt back from the restaurant, whatever. I will have them um, in an email, tell me what they spent the money on, where they spent the money on, and where should be showing up in, um, a, I guess, in complimentary to what you see on the bank statement as well. You know, it should say, Ruth's Steakhouse or I don't know, Texas Roadhouse or something like that. It should say what it is they spent their money on. So it's kind of got to be legit there. They can't be like, oh yeah, you know, $200 at Ikea. You're like, well, did you buy $200 worth of food at Ikea or did you buy, you know, it's not jiving. So you get that, like it's, if it smells fishy, it probably is fishy. So let's make it make sense. Um, I have them write out what it is. I, I also have them write out what happened to the receipt. And what I do is I save it as a PDF and I use that as the receipt and my proof of source documentation. So that way I can move on. And I keep that, especially those emails on hand or attached to the QuickBooks uh, transaction that I'm recording so that when the IRS comes knocking, and they will, I can always say, this is what happened. And the client, you know, 
five years from now, the client's not going to remember. You're not going to remember. Even if you're like 20 clients deep five years from now, you're not going to remember the one. So do what you can to protect yourself now. Cover your ass now and create a source document. Create a listing if they cannot track it down. Again, if it smells fishy, it probably is fishy. All right. So make sure that you guys are collecting as many source documents as possible. Utilize um, Google what was it? Google Docs, utilize uh, Tax Dome or some kind of professional portfolio and online portal. Portal, jeez. All right. So this is what wraps up our very first intro into bookkeeping section. And I appreciate you guys, everyone. And if you have any questions, concerns, or any kind of feedback that will help you better understand these three drills, please feel free to reach out and let us know. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next couple sections, especially with our new curriculum layout. Till next time.